Hi guys, welcome back to Winsome Cottage Garden. My name is Hannah and I'm so glad that you decided to join me today. It's also a new year, so happy new year. And I'm excited for all that 2024 will bring. As you might be able to guess from the decor, I'm actually filming this before Christmas. Uh, though I am one that leaves my decor up a little bit longer. One of my grandmothers used to always believe that after Christmas you had to have all your Christmas decorations down by New Year's Day. I'm not that intense, but it will be, you know, in the first week or two of the new year that things slowly start making their way back into storage. But for now, I'm going to enjoy it while it lasts. Today, I thought I'd welcome you back into my new house. I say new. I moved like end of September. And I've been slowly getting projects done around the house inside, especially now that the weather is turned and it's a little bit cooler. Today, I am going to be doing a big project, which I think will help bring a lot more of my personality into the house, which is doing a gallery wall. I absolutely love gallery walls. I did a lot of them in my old house. And over the years, I've collected a lot of pieces and artwork that is a little eclectic, but I love bringing it together. And I thought I would bring you guys along as I put up my first gallery wall in this new house. Now, I've been hesitating to do this because I do actually want to paint in um, basically every room in this house. I don't mind the colors the previous owners used. I think they're nice enough. They're just not something that I would have picked. And they also haven't been painted in seven to nine years, depending on what what room we're in and I used a finish that doesn't wear very well so it's time to slowly begin giving things a fresh coat of paint however there are a lot of walls it's going to take a little bit of time and while I had hesitated to put art up until I had gotten the paint up since I'm just going to be doing it with the help of my dad and my mom who uh, both are really great at painting um it's going to be a slower process. It's probably going to take over a year for us to kind of tackle all the different areas because we're just going to be working it into our regularly scheduled life. And this gallery wall in particular is not an area that will be planned, painted quickly. So uh, all that to say, it's why I haven't put stuff on the wall yet. But now that I've decided I'm not going to wait to put artwork up until it's painted, I'm really excited to tackle this. Now, a couple things that I wanted to talk about. In my opinion, one of the things that makes the best types of galleries wall is when you mix mediums and styles. So what that will mean for me is you'll see photographs, whether it's like landscape photographs I've taken on trips or in various places, or even like photographs of friends and families and events. And also, um, also different types of artwork, whether it's like uh, textile art, watercolor, uh, drawing, that kind of stuff. I've also like to mix things like you will see like a, a sign or a piece of pottery that I'll put on the wall because I think it makes it really interesting and it helps you kind of direct the eye line of the art wall. All my art has been carefully stacked waiting for a moment such as this. I actually have too much for just this wall. I need to do another wall in my basement, which we may document on this channel later because uh, that'll be a little bit more pop art and fun. But for now, I'm going to dive in. One of the things that's gonna be tricky for this is that all my art is still wrapped up. Normally when I do these, I'll collect things over time. Um, and then once I have enough to do a space, which I'll usually have something on that wall anyway, I'll take it down, have everything out in front of me and then kind of hodgepodge it. Because what I like to do, I know sometimes people like to put the empty frames up on walls or cut out pieces of paper and see how they go. That's not my thing. I am very much measurements and specifics type of thing, but I like to see it and be able to move things around without putting holes in the wall with the actual art in place rather than a piece of paper. For me, so much has to do with eye lines to making sure that your the eye naturally travels where you want it to and the colors aren't working and meshing well together. So what I do is I will measure my space and map it out on the ground. The wall we're also going to be doing is a very odd wall because it's in a stairwell, which I actually have never done a gallery wall in a stairwell. So I'm a little anxious about the ladder, if I'm being honest, because I don't really like ladders uh, or heights in any form, but we're gonna do this and it's gonna turn out fantastic and I'm excited to dive in. So the wall in question that we're gonna be working on is actually a little tricky to show you. The lighting in here is probably really hard, but this is my front entryway. We've got all these big, beautiful windows, and this is the main stairwell in the house. So this wall right here 
is where we're going to be doing a big gallery wall. I have measured up this big outline and actually already have it on the floor in my living room. So let me show you what it looks like. And this is like pretty exact. I mean, it's probably within an inch to two inches, these blue tape lines of the entire wall. A lot of times what I'll do is I will just do the section that I want the gallery wall to take place in. This one, I'm not entirely sure how many pieces I want to use. I have done floor to ceiling walls before. I don't think I'm going to do it in the stairwell because I think some of the stuff would be a waste. Um, but I want to be able to kind of know where things are. So here is the outline. We are standing right now at the bottom of the stairs. Here are the stairs. There's a five foot little wall. There's an odd cutout and this is the whole thing. Probably come in and do like a guide line about three foot, at least on the stairwell. Uh, but I'm not 100% sure exactly how it's going to go. I'll come put three foot here and three foot there. Uh, but this is the space we're working with. I really just need to start getting stuff out and getting it on that like uh, outline on the ground. I use painter's tape just so you know too because it is a lot of painter's tape that I don't really want to be wasteful. We actually bought some that is off brand and does not stick on walls, which for painter's tape is useless. So this is actually a really good use of it. I think what I'm going to do is set you guys up and do a time lapse. And then as we dive into this or I start making decisions, I will kind of pop back in and out to explain some of my thinking and things for you to consider if you are making your own gallery wall. been a couple hours. I'm kind of at a point that I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. But since you are along on this journey with me, let me explain my current quandary. So we are once again at the bottom of the stairs. Uh, and this I think is pretty good. This is about 90 inches tall. I could go a little bit higher and I might end up doing that, but I don't want to be too high because anything I put up there, you're not really going to be able to see and appreciate. So I would only really put things up there that I don't care if you see as much. And I don't know if I want to do that at this point. I, I should also say I apologize if you... It's feeding time. I do try to col balance color and texture. This might be a little too much white right next to each other, so I might end up popping that elsewhere. The other thing I try to do is guide the your eye up. And things like this picture... Clearly, it, it draws you in because it's a great picture of baby Mia on the beach, Lake Michigan, running free, but it's pointing in or up the staircase. So most of the stuff I have down on this side will be pointing in. So like this person is opening a door, but her body language pointing into the room like this, the sweep of those flowers pointing in. And likewise, you'll get to about here, which is getting more central, and you'll see that the line actually is going to start going backwards, or it's pointing more at each other. This is kind of the dividing lines, so like this frame, or this fan, for instance, going this way. This is actually something I've done multiple uh, arrangements, and I absolutely love this particular setup, because these little boys, you know, little lost boys, I always think of them like... Uh, are right next to this girl running with boxes, and I don't know why, but it just really pleases me that they're kind of like next to each other, because she's running down, they're running in, I love it. So I always try to put them kind of close together. These are both pieces by an artist called Printer and Press, who I absolutely love. This is actually hers too. I have a lot of them. 
The quandary I'm currently in is, is this too much white next to each other? I'm leaning that it might be. Now this picture, though pretty, isn't one I'm particularly like passionate about. So what I could do is pop this out and move it up. Because the other thing I'm thinking about is this one, I'd like things to come within like two-ish feet of the ceiling, which means I honestly need to move stuff up like this should go out there so that's about two ish feet if that stays there in which case i really need to bring it along more and then i need to add like move this up so that it's more pl pleasing along the stairs i really don't want to get up into no man's land up there but i could put these things up high cut like this one because this isn't one that i'm like really, really want people to get up close and look at in detail. Now, it's pretty, don't get me wrong, but that's why, that's why I own it. But I don't mind if it's up high. I just don't know what I would replace it with. So that's one quandary I'm thinking about. Is this too much white? The other thing is, this is actually a new art piece, and it's hard to really show you, but it's got um, a sheeny bronze to it, which I don't have a lot of got gold that I can spread throughout. I've got wood tones and gray tones I can spread throughout. But I don't have a lot of this bronze. And the way I've currently got this arranged, the three bronzy pieces I have are right here. I'm wondering if that's too close or if I should move it over more. I'm also a little worried that I've got these guys. One, two, three. The three pieces I'm going to use here are all very very close I really should move I really should move the mermaid down and that would be good from a blue perspective because right now that's too much dark blue together so actually she might not be a bad thing to move down an anchor right here hmm I just can move a skinny thing here let me try that real quick I am like it's better but it is breaking one of the rules I just talked about. The other thing you might have seen me grab a tape measure, I realized I have a light switch right about there. So I think what I'm gonna do is leave this. Actually, I will add. I have some small pieces over here that I'll probably pop in as needed. I'm thinking this one would be really pretty. And I'll just pop it here and then we can shift based. I think it'll be right about there. And then I could pop, I don't want to do too many of my little tchotchkes. Oh, actually, this would be a really good one. Because it is really pretty. And it's metallic. Oh, but then there's too much metal. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe this one. It's dark, but light balances it. It brings spot of gold. They probably go like this. And hope that the light switch is there. I'll play with it probably once I get into the space. Now, I'm going to think that even though this is technically breaking the rules because she's looking this way, the moon, and since she's light, you could say that the, like, line goes that way, and she'd go with the stairs going down. So I might, I might say that's okay. I need to think about that. I keep talking about eyeline, and why that's important is it is really how your eye just naturally follows and progresses through anything. In this case, a gallery wall. I do a lot of graphic design work in my real job and you always have to take that into account because you don't want to basically, in a gallery wall or anything, have people's natural eye progression take them away from what you want them to be looking at. So that's why I'm paying attention to how does the colors in this overall gallery wall like spread out, kind of bring it cohesive, not having them too much together, but like you're looking at a blue here and oh, there's a blue over there, or your eye naturally goes from the mermaid to the ship to this. So you're trying to make sure that the eye naturally stays in the middle of the gallery wall uh, for the composition, balancing, like I said, the different sheens and colors. Um, I don't think the campfire is gonna go there, but it's a good start. I don't have any like black. A lot of black black I might save that for my basement gallery wall but um that's why I try to kind of keep things in I won't put anything like super dark way up high 
uh, unless I want people's eyes to go up there and stop. I prefer to do lighter things up top or things with like a natural curve so it like ends and comes back down because it then allows people's eyes, it doesn't seem like a hard stop and there's nothing above it. It's a little rambly, but that's why eyeliner is so important. I don't have a ton of photos in here. So many things to think about. I do have pictures of my dogs and a couple of my really good friends. I have one more I definitely want to work in. Um, I don't think this brown is too brown next to each other. I do like this mermaid down here. I need to decide if I'm happy with her. I'm probably just going to stare at this for a little bit. It's the midway point. It's where I am right now. And this is how I start putting things together. It is a long and slow process. It's a Saturday today. So I'll probably leave this on the ground. Go away for a couple hours. Maybe tonight start hanging. Or more likely tomorrow morning wake up and hang and pray I get it all hung. Uh, before the day is done. Because I don't want to leave it Monday. Okay, I did a little bit more. I called my mom. I've moved some stuff around. I'm also gonna walk away from this for a little while. Sometimes that's what you need to do to be inspired. One of the problems I'm running into is A, my dog really wants to go get her daily dental treat, uh, which she's not supposed to get for like an hour. But I'm, I'm gonna give in to this bullying to make her stop. But before I do that, I thought I'd quickly show you what I've moved around and one of the problems I'm running into. I'm going to walk away, go do nothing for a little while, and then come back with fresh eyes. I went and got this piece. Um, it's not perfect. I think I'm going to leave it here until I come back because this is too much of the same and this is too much gold. But I, I might move that elsewhere and this can also move. Um, this I freed up because one of the problems I'm running into over here is I have too much of the same size of things. I'm really happy with like this portion. I did decide this is okay. I think what I need to do is move this over a little bit more and break up some of the samey same sizes. Um, but that means I'm probably gonna have to break up this, which I think I just need to accept I need to. This is too dark, too high, and this is too light on an edge. So this is also, I'm probably going to move her over here, um, so she's going in the right place. There'll be some, like, green down here as well. That's the current status quo. I shall come back with fresh eyes uh, in another stint soon. quite late 
Um, this is taking a little bit longer than I thought it would. I think I've got the layout and I'm going to leave you guys here. I feel really bad breaking this into two parts, but it's getting quite long. I'm a little concerned of how long it's getting. Gallery walls take time. That's why I like to put things on the ground, uh, especially for me because like the color and making sure that the flow is right is so important. I really couldn't just put frames up to get the spacing right or do paper. I'm such a visual person that having it down on the ground where I can shuffle and play and make sure that I don't have like this one jarring thing that your eye just goes straight to or you've got the mix and match. You may have noticed that I have like a number of repeated elements, whether it's a gold frame or I've got like four different Chinese watercolors that I'm spreading throughout this wall. Or I've got like a small series of like black and white. I don't know if it's called block printing. I can't remember exactly what it is. But it is the like rubber stamp, for lack of a better word, style black and white print in the similar um, frame. Oh, and that's one other thing I wanted to mention. One of the things that I think also can make a gallery wall look better is making sure you're using mats. Now, some of these art pieces I did get professionally framed. I get a lot of my framing done at Michael's, which can be kind of expensive. However, I will only ever get things framed. They do two big sales of the year, usually one in July and one around Thanksgiving in the beginning of December, where you'll get like 70% off or like 60% plus 40. I don't know how the math works, but... They make it so it's still pricey, but instead of paying like $800 for something, you're paying $200 or $150. Um, so some of my pieces are professionally framed, uh, and that's where there's some of the colored mats and whatnot come in. But I also have a whole chunk of ones where I went to Home Goods and TJ Maxx, bought a ton of frames, and then went to Amazon and got mats, like pre-cut mats that I then layered in. I think that can make things look professional even if they're not and they mesh really well then with the more expensive framed pieces and make it look more complete. It allows you to draw some other colors in. I think when I bought um, the mats on Amazon, I bought like a 20 pack with varying colors. What you'll typically do is they're pre-cut and it fits in an 8x10 frame and it's a 5x7 mat or if it's an 11x14 frame and then the hole is 8x10. So then you just, I have a couple boxes of different mats in my basement. So if I bought new pieces, hopefully the colors I have work. Um, but I think that really elevates the look a lot. This wasn't really meant to be like a how-to guide uh, or follow this formula and you'll be amazing. I just really wanted to show you things that I think are really important for people to consider as they're putting together a gallery wall of their own. So that if you're doing something like this in your own home, you can start thinking more about, oh, that eye line thing is important because if I'm looking at this and it's on the edge and it's pointing me away from it, maybe I need to move it to the other side uh, or maybe I need to balance color so there's not this one jarring thing that your eyes just drawn to and then it gets stuck there. So keeping that eye line, balancing the color, uh, and then having giving yourself space to redo it. I don't know how many iterations I went through in this video. It took about six-ish hours with some breaks and whatnot in between, which is quite long, but this is quite a large space. So it's okay for it to take time. It's okay to, for it to look at it and just stand back to call some other people uh, and just live with it for a little bit. So that's what I'm going to be doing right now. I'm going to be living with this. Come look at it in the morning, uh, maybe make any final tweaks, and then get it up on the wall. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe and hit that thumbs up button and make sure that you come back next week. It'll be next Saturday. You'll be able to see part two, and I'm really sorry that we can't do it all in this video, but I feel like it's getting quite long. I hope you will check back then. I really appreciate you joining me today, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.